Right now I'm in Tambopata, Peru, in the middle of the beautiful Amazon rainforest, walking on a human trail. But what I'm looking for is a trail made by a different type of animal. In fact, millions of those animals. Let's go see what we can find. The search is on. But in the Amazon rainforest, it never takes too long to find these little trail makers, especially because we are currently surrounded by what they are after, leaves. I always like to call leaf cutter ants the hardest working animals in the Amazon rainforest because think about what they're having to do right now. A bunch of them are going up. They have to do this climb all the way up to the canopy. All the way up there, they have to climb out on a branch. They have to find a leaf. They have to cut that leaf, which believe me, isn't easy because trees have evolved to try to prevent herbivory like this. And so they're trying not to get eaten. Then carry that leaf all the way down and follow this trail all the way back to the nest. Who knows how far away that is? And when you look at these, what I love is the tiny ones. So there's these little guys like right here. Uh, let me see, oh, right there. And they look like they're catching a free ride on a leaf, but actually they serve an evolutionary purpose. They are defending that carrying ant from a parasitoid fly, a fly that will lay an egg in the mouth of the ant, and then it decapitates them eventually with its maggot. And I assume the leaf cutter ants don't want that, so they've evolved this defense system of tinier ants catching a ride and swatting away flies. I think we need to follow where these guys go because this is probably one of the biggest colonies I've ever come across. Look at how thick this is. It keeps going. And then over here, I mean, look at this. We got, this is the leaf cutter ant super highway. It keeps going. That is easily 40 feet that direction. I can't see past it, but it probably is taken on other trees. And then the nest, you can always tell the direction of the nest because that's the direction the leaves are going. So the nest is somewhere down that way. Now, I wanna do a little experiment with these ants and see if they can help us, let's just say, communicate a few things to the world. And we're gonna kinda of plan some of their instincts. But first, I think we have to follow this leaf cutter ant super highway and see if we can find that mega nest because I have a feeling it's gonna be giant. Let's push through. These ants are taking us on an adventure. Whew. Oh, I think I see it. I think I finally see it. It's down here. Oh. Whew. Ah, slippery. All right, where'd the road go? Road's up here, road's up here. I think this is it. I think the road. Oh yeah, here's the entrance. Right up here. Let's get a better view. Right here. This is where the super highway enters the city. Underneath here, Honestly, it could be millions of leaf cutter ants. This is one of the largest mounds I've ever seen. All the way from this side, look down there, all the way over to there, far side of the hill. Huge. You know what I just realized? We pushed pretty far into the forest and I got worried for a second we'd get lost, but we won't because someone made a road here. These guys did it. Look at that. We could just follow this all the way back to our human trail and we would end up okay. But wow, okay. This is the nest. There's entrance here, here, right there. There's an entrance over there. I bet you on the other side, they have other entrances and other kind of super highways leading in to this metropolis underground. Now leaf cutter ants sure do cut leaves, but they don't eat leaves. Actually what they are doing is they are farming. There is a giant fungus underground that with a colony this big, who knows, could be the size of a car, and that fungus eats leaves, and these ants eat that fungus. Now that fungus needs a very specific set of nutrients to grow. It needs different minerals, it needs different proteins, it needs nitrogen, all these different things that the ants somehow have evolved to figure out when that fungus is sick, what it needs. And that means that each time they go out, they will go to a different tree because sometimes one tree has too much of this or too little of that. So they'll kind of balance 
amongst all the trees, which actually works out in the tree's benefit out here, because if leafcutter ants liked only one particular type of tree, um, I'm pretty sure that tree would be cut bare by the end of a single day. You know what, now that we are here, I wanna try something. It's something I did with my friend Destin at Smarter Every Day almost 10 years ago, but now, you know, this is a new colony. We got some really good cameras with us and I think it could look actually like kind of amazing. What I wanna do is try to use these ants to, let's just say, communicate some messages to the world. And we're gonna do that by taking advantage of those instincts that these ants have, that they need to feed the fungus certain things and I can help provide those certain things. But first, we gotta do a little arts and crafts. As we head back to the trail, remember I mentioned earlier the ants helping us to communicate. And yeah, I meant that quite literally. Before heading into the rainforest on this trip, I typed up and printed out a few messages on paper. And now we're going to cut them into ant-sized portions and let the ants do the rest. Here's the plan. I'm hoping to see if we can convince these leafcutter ants that these words are leaves, basically. Now, sodium is something that is pretty rare in the rainforest. It results in all sorts of fun behaviors that I've talked about on the Jungle Diaries before, but one of them is that anything salty, leafcutter ants will cut up and take apart. You put a t-shirt out there, it's happened to one of my t-shirts, they completely decimated it. Next day, it was just torn to bits by these ants. I think that just by the fact that I have touched these pieces of paper, there'll be enough salt on them that when they detect that, they will wanna pick it up and carry it to their nest. I'm not saying it's gonna be easy. They're probably gonna pick it up the wrong way a few times, but we're gonna keep at it till we can get that message out. And not to mention, the sun is starting to go down, so we may have to take this whole process into the night. But don't you worry, leaf cutter ants, keep working late. Okay, so I'm trying to get a nice shot set up on here, where it's at least framed right, and we can get an ant passing. And we have a lot of challenges here. For one thing, they may not pick it up right, and also getting that focus in the right position, because this is a wide trail, is going to be hard, but okay, it's going in. First message they're putting out to the world, I feel like they would want to say this. Save the rainforest. Let's go. We tried. Tried. Look at that. Oh, he's not holding it right. He's not holding it right. And tried again, even into nightfall. And finally, after team effort, it happened. In the end, we got the ants to tell the world to save the rainforest, tune in to The Jungle Diaries, and for those who want to send the gift that keeps on giving, we have a download below for you to share happy birthday from these ants to you. And finally, thank you. It's been an adventure out here. And if you want to help this rainforest, here's two important things you can do. One is to buy Rainforest Alliance certified products. Look for this symbol on things ranging from coffee to chocolate. And secondly, visit this rainforest. And yes, I mean literally this rainforest. Go to rainforestexpeditions.com, check out their lodges. It's an amazing way for you to visit this area, get to understand the nature, the people, and put money right into this ecosystem and the community around it. You won't regret it.